Boeing had such a great reputation for safety among pilots. There was even a common saying, if it ain't Boeing, I ain't going. Which the company put on T-shirts, lanyards and mugs that you can still buy on their website. All perfect gifts for someone who loves branded merch and does not love following the news. <laughs> And that stellar reputation has been credited to the company's engineer-centred open culture. William Boeing himself once said, after noticing some shoddy workmanship on his production line, that he would close up shop rather than send out work of this kind. And one project leader in the 80s and early 90s is remembered for saying, no secrets, and the only thing that will make me rip off your head and shit down your neck is withholding information. <laughs> and I'm sorry, but that should be the mug. You want to shift merch? That's how you do it. But it's pretty clear that we're a long way from that culture today. And most observers will trace the shift back to this pivotal event. A major announcement today in the world of aviation. Boeing and McDonnell Douglas today announced they would join together to form the world's largest aircraft manufacturer. This is, I believe, a, an historic moment in aviation and aerospace. Yeah, the Sky Boys got business married. Boeing merged with McDonnell Douglas, who were primarily known for military planes and had a lousy reputation for commercial airliners. Most notably, the DC-10, which had multiple accidents resulting in over 1,100 passenger fatalities. And look, was merging with the McDonnell Douglas Aerospace Manufacturing Corporation slash Murder Emporium that <laughs> Boeing CEO's worst decision? Probably not, because he also, and this is true, married his first cousin. <laughs> So, the last decision I'd ask this guy to make is who it's a good idea to couple up with. <laughs> and while Boeing was the acquirer in the partnership, it soon became clear that the McDonnell Douglas culture, which was much more cutthroat and profit-driven, was going to become dominant. Early on, the McDonnell Douglas management team even gave their Boeing counterparts a plaque featuring an Economist magazine cover about the challenges of corporate mergers, which sounds benign until you see that the actual cover was this picture of two camels fucking. <laughs> and McDonnell Douglas execs added the line, who's on top? And setting aside the weirdness of gifting your co-workers camel porn, it begs the question, what was going on at The Economist back then? <laughs> Spare a thought for the employee who dreamt of doing business journalism only to find themselves digging through photos of horned up camel sluts banging in the dirt. <laughs> A year after the merger was finalised, Boeing announced a new stock buyback program, taking company money that could have gone to making planes and using it to inflate stock prices instead. And even mechanics at the company noticed the culture shift. There is a major campaign launched called Share Value. And the idea was that they wanted everybody to be aware of the stock price. And they wanted everybody working together to increase the stock value. Even the technical meetings, everything revolved around Boeing stock prices. Yeah, that's not reassuring, because that's not where you want their priorities focused. No one wants to get on a plane and hear, good afternoon, this is your captain speaking, we had a few technical problems, but our maintenance crew has assured us that the stock price is still holding strong, so <laughs> let's get this big metal tube full of you and your loved ones up into the sky, shall we? <laughs> and the culture change was solidified by the decision to relocate the corporate headquarters from Seattle where their commercial planes were actually designed and built, 2,000 miles away to Chicago. Because, as their CEO put it, when the headquarters is located in proximity to a principal business, the corporate centre is inevitably drawn into day-to-day -day business operations. And, yeah, it should be. <laughs> You're essentially saying, hey, we're going to be making big business decisions over here, so we don't need to be bothered with you nerds and your keeping planes in the air bullshit. <laughs> Now, CEO Phil Condit soon left the company amid a contracting scandal and was replaced by Harry Stonecipher, uh, the former CEO of McDonnell Douglas. He was an aggressive cost-cutter who pushed Boeing's management to play tougher with its workforce and to introduce the slogan, less family, more team, which, frankly, would have been great advice for Phil Condit when he was choosing a romantic <laughs> partner. Less family, Phil. You want to be a team, but, like, not one that's related by blood.